All right, right behind me, I got a 2023 Lowrider ST, and it is the Moonshine Horsepower Essential Kit. They need more horsepower, you need your bars where you want them, you want to feel comfortable, and one of my good friends came to me looking for a bike. She had a Dyna, and she wanted a brand new M8 and was thinking about upgrading. So her name is Letitia Klein, and she was voted one of the top 100 women riders for 2023 by Dealer News, and uh, she hasn't seen her bike yet. But when she came to me and wanted something bigger, I knew exactly what we needed to do. So behind me is the build. She hasn't seen it yet, but of course, this has our Moonshine Horsepower Stage 2 485 cam in it. So that is the MHP 485 cam shaft. Um, other goodies on it, I don't wanna go over too much because she's arriving and I wanna show her the bike and I'll explain everything we've done to it and the reasons behind it when she gets here shortly. Right here in my hands is Krauss Moto's brand new Bully 8 inch ST Pro Kit. So you're getting a triple tree. This is their new Bully tree for the soft tails. It's an 8 inch kickback riser from Krauss where they are solid mounted to the triple tree. The riser bushing is moved right below the handlebars. We'll talk about that later here. Relocating the ST gauge on an adjustable bracket. And it's got the fly racing aluminum bars and these got a two and a half inch rise on it and it just repositions your handlebars in a completely different angle it gives you a more positive feel because your your polyurethane bushings are so close to where your hands are you don't have a lot of flex and the reason we go to this setup is because we are able to get the bars at a different angle that are more comfortable to your wrist these guys are angled up a little bit these guys are kind of straight so the Flymoto bars have a lot of engineering in them because when you are on a supercross bike, you're on a motocross bike, and you're pushing the limits on and off whoops, big doubles, kickers, you're, you're just doing everything you can ride on that bike. These handlebars go through a lot of engineering to make sure your wrist angles are at the proper location so your body can take the abuse during supercross or motocross. That's why they work so good when we convert them over to a Harley Davidson handlebar and this whole setup is a more positive fuel it's a more comfortable fuel and with the Krauss moto setup we have a ton of options we can even take a t-rex plate and we can move this guy further back you can get a straight riser we like to go the kickback riser on this bike and we're going to finish this bike off with a brand new seat that's going to push the rider a little bit closer to the handlebars something else new going on this bike is the new pro line peg adjuster for soft tails from Krauss Moto. This allows you to put the peg in the factory location. This guy is able to be adjusted so you can have your feet go up, have them go down, down in front. It's basically a 360 where you can mount that and you can reposition your Max Lean floorboard. So these are also the Krauss Moto Max Lean mini floorboards. They're grippy, they look good, they're functioning. And now we can adjust a little bit of adjustability on the low rider platform. Some guys are complaining that the pegs are a little too close. Problem solved. We are putting some Baja Designs amber fog lights in. And this is kind of a different setup here. What they're trying to do is light up the corners that the headlight doesn't grab with the amber lights. So when you're making a turn or something like that, you get this lit up a little bit better. These kits are not really made for Harley. You know, they're, they're made for anything. So the harness I started with had three different lengths of wire this long for a soft tail and that you know we're not going to do that uh, so i am rewiring everything 
Uh, luckily, Baja Designs actually sent terminals and stuff like that so you can do it properly. We're gonna wire this up so that it's not constantly at the battery. Uh, the way they kind of have it all wired up is you just hook it up to the battery, you turn it on and off. If you leave it on, you can kill your battery. You know, just make it easier this way. It only works when the battery's on. So uh, when I get done, we will have a lot less wiring and we'll actually take some pictures, show what it looks like in here because uh, this is one off, you know, one of those things. But I just couldn't handle all the wiring. Too much. I was like, there's no way I can put this on this bike. <laughs> Unused wire. Well, after hours. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> I'm so excited. What's up? <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. It's, cool as hell it's so cold, but I'm also. I just. I got. I just can't wait. <laughs> you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm. Yeah. Really ready. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> wow. Good honors. <laughs> I mean, they're okay stock. <laughs> That's not what we do here. So everyone, we've been on a journey together. Letitia and I met over a Sportster in Orlando, Florida. And uh, yeah. it was back when I was at Space Coast before I had my own shop. Mm -hmm. You're still saved in my phone, is that? It really? Space, Space Coast, Coast Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> so went from an iron mm -hmm. and then she's like, okay, I'm traveling. I'm doing a lot of highway. I need six gear. Yeah. So we got you a lowrider ass twin cam. I believe it was a 16. Yeah. You know, I, t I texted you one morning. And I was like, hey, do you got this Dyna? And you're like, yeah. And I came right here, got it, rode it to Florida. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, it was 17. It's a 17. 17. Yeah. But it was, it was a 17. And that's when the East Coast was kind of figuring out Dynas were cool. Yeah. And over in the West Coast, you couldn't get a Dyna. In the East Coast, they were available, and I was plucking them from all these dealers because they didn't realize the lowrider dresses were like a unicorn yet. So we mm -hmm. had a ton of them. And you had that one for five years? Yeah, I get, yeah, until like just this one. And then I loved it, took it everywhere. I rode it home, stripped it down, rode it to Sturgis, fought a buffalo, rode it to all 54 national parks, ripped it, ripped it everywhere. I mean, it was a great bike, but. There wasn't was, enough. Well, then I'm sitting here at work and I get a text message. Do you have one of these? And it was <laughs> a low rider ST with a ferry. Yeah. And I think you wanted to go to this because you were at a bike, a bike show. Wheels and waves in France. And this guy rolled up on this low rider ST. And I was like, what is that? That's so cool. I was at a time in my life where I wanted to transition maybe to a cruising, like, you know, big bagger bike, uh, just because the way I ride, but then this was the, the best option for that. It's the sleekness that I like, it has the room that I want and the power to get me where I need to be. Harley crushed it when they redesigned it. And of course, we got the brand new fairing. When Harley was revitalizing the FXRT fairing, we were all nervous because it's such an iconic fairing, yeah. Harley, and, and it's really taken off. But they wanted to bring it modern, which concerned all of us, and they nailed it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just looks really good. It, it's enough wind protection, but it fits the bike really well. Their engineers, I applaud them. They did a really good job, especially their artists. Now the fun stuff. So this front end and the handlebar setup we got is Kraus Moto's brand new Bully ST kit. And mm -hmm. this is their eight inch riser setup. So the Bully ST comes with a brand new triple tree. You have their eight inch riser with a kickback. <laughs> When the reason we always run the cross moto setup is they take the riser from the factory location that's in the triple tree down here and they are incorporated into the riser. So your isolator that's going to give you your dampening is in the riser here and we want them right underneath the handlebar. That way you have less flex, but it takes away the vibration you're going to feel through your handlebars without having a lot of flex. And mm -hmm. the reason we recommended this bar system to you is one you asked me about them. Yeah. Because you've had a bunch of different ones on bikes, never had Krauss. Right. I've ran a lot of different things. I've worked with Krauss in, in the past. I love 
how he geeks out on this. Like he knows every single thing, really walks you through like everything from my height, the way I like to ride, how I like to sit on the bike, where I should be on the bike for the type of riding I need to do and sets me up that way. I mean, if you talk to someone, like that, then you know that they know what they're talking about. So when I said to you, hey, I ride long, I don't want my arms to get tired, you're like, we rock Krauss. Well, I was always the guy that had like <laughs> the car that was primered with all the horsepower under the hood, because I didn't care what it looked like. Yeah. And Krauss, he doesn't care about anything else but how you're ergonomically set on the bikes. So you go to his website, you click ergonomics, and he goes into all of it. And he's really big on seat position, because he wants to move you in the optimal position mm -hmm. for not just your comfort, but for performance as well. Right. And he's not just someone designing parts and stuff, he rips. He moved to Utah just so he could ride his dirt bike more. So cool. And um, it's just been awesome to do stuff with him through the years. And we are very good friends. And I'm excited for you to try these after you ask me about them. But this is his brand new kit just for the STs. Right here, it takes the factory gauges. And he has it where we can position them where it's easiest for you to see. And he's always thinking about that because everyone is sitting in a different seating position. Mm -hmm. They're sitting with the bars either higher or lower. So when he does a mount for the gauges, he makes sure it can be universal for his setups so it can be in the optimum position for you we mounted this here we could mount it higher for you we could put it on top of your risers i want to see where you want them uh, we like this location so when we ride monday we'll figure out if that's perfect for you if we have to move them and then i've been selling rock forms phone mounts and cases since they were mountain bikes they were even for harleys when i started buying them really and i built a custom bike and i was running my gauges on my phone and couldn't find a phone mount and i called them and uh I bought one for the for a mountain bike and put it on my Harley and then said this would be a great idea to put them on the Harleys and they've just taken over now. We keep them in stock all the time. They're awesome. The phone case, everyone always asks me because it's got a magnet in it. Yeah. I'm sticking it on my toolbox. I'm sticking it on my refrigerator. Everyone loves their case. So to have your phone up here for your GPS on this bike because it doesn't come stock with one, mm -hmm. it just makes it so convenient to be able to mount your phone here. And everyone's usually more familiar with their phone GPS than anything else. Right, for sure. Having it right there is really good. Now, if you're running an infotainment center, you can do either or. I like my phone GPS the best. We have a pair of Flymoto handlebars from Krauss Moto to finish off. So it is a Bully ST 8 inch kit, 8 inch because of the riser. The bars are a 2.5 inch bar, so it's a 10.5 inch complete rise mm -hmm. if you want to see it. And the triple tree we just did because it looks so good. All right, and then we have perch mounts here. Yeah. So good. We've taken them mm -hmm. off. It just finishes them off. We took the stock levers that were just the regular aluminum. We have black levers and we run these performance grips on everything. The reason we run them, mm -hmm. it's a little more narrow than a factory grip. Have you even felt I, ha I had these on my Dyna. Yeah. Yeah. I, ro I rock these. I love them. They're the best because they're a little narrower and mm -hmm. you have a glove on and then it feels like a factory grip with a glove on and it's narrower on the outside of your hand because your hand's smaller on the outside mm -hmm. and it just really conforms to you in your hands. And then how did we end up with these badass lights on here? Well, because your guy here, Drew, had them on his bike and he showed me, I was like, those are awesome. I live in a national park. There's a lot of deer there and I like in a lot of ditches. And so I like to see, and he's like, you gotta put these ditch lights and you guys did an awesome job. And I don't like turn signals. So we, you made them as small as possible. So I'm still safe, but. Wants to be safe, but wants her turn signals as small as possible. <laughs> Look at them, you can see them. Turn signal, custom right there on the outside. We tucked up some Baja designs so she could see every Bambi in her state for <laughs> National Park. Don't hit them, you know, take care of Bambi. And these things are bad to the bone. They're tucked up in there. We did the ambers just to go for the look. We angled them out towards, you know, the shoulder of the road, towards what might be coming out of the woods at you. And they are impressive on. Uh, you will love them. <laughs> yeah. Everyone driving towards you or in front of you. Will hate them. Is gonna hate them, but hey, we're trying to say Bambi, Don right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same time. Now I got a loud bike and a and a bright one too. So I've had injuries, right? Well, that's one of my other things. Like when I ride and I ride long distance and like racing and wrecking and all of those things and surgeries and like you just your body hurts. So like I like to be comfortable and the position of my feet is one of those things. But also having I don't want to run full boards because I like to lean a little bit. But like th that's a good compromise to me. 
Well, you ended up with those mini floorboards, and these are the Krauss mini floorboards designed for the lowrider. He's got them for multiple applications, but you had a discussion with him over what you wanted to do with your feet. Yeah. And that's what you guys came up with for the best option. Right. Yeah, he liked them too. We're, we'll see, I'm gonna put it to the test. I, li I love it so far. And then we've got this two, this uh, thrashing pipe. These on all of our builds, they're stage two for the most part on a soft tail. It's a great exhaust for a stock 107, 114, 117. And then when we pump up the horsepower like we did on this stage two, which has our MHP 45 camshaft in it, it really shines. Yeah. It makes torque right off the hit. Um, we're over 120 horsepower with just a cam in this bike and the fueling patented anti-reversion chambers on this pipe. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't make the horsepower higher, but riding the bike, it's responsive all over the RPMs, especially between like 2,400 RPMs to 34. It's just really responsive and you don't have to downshift as much. And this pipe really helps out because some other pipes we have will make the same power on the peak end or even the same torque. But when you ride the two bikes, you're like, man, it just feels a lot different. Yeah, I love what they do. I mean, they've been the quality stuff. Lance, uh, we worked with Harley a lot for the Harley Hooligan things, and that's when he was like heavy on the development, where he just developed and started pushing the pipes, and and so I loved it, and I'm excited to put it on this bike. Well, what else is cool about this exhaust is it comes with two different baffles. You can do just a perforated that's wide open, or you can do a dog ball baffle. We prefer the dog ball baffle because it quiets down the pipe a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you a little better low end torque on it and it doesn't sacrifice horse on the top end. So awesome pipe, a um, couple different things. The, the dog ball is patented by fueling and the anti-reversion chambers on this are patented by fueling. That was something that Jim Fueling did back in the day and uh, it just continues with the fueling line. So how much horsepower do I got? <laughs> Man, that's a good one. 126 horsepower. I mean, those Harley 131 crate engines are barely making more than that. Unbelievable. 139 foot-pounds of torque. This is a stage two build. This is our Moonshine Horsepower Staple Stage Two. So let me break it down for everyone watching. It is the Moonshine Horsepower 45 camshaft. We are running a pair of fueling race series lifters in this bike. It has the Moonshine Horsepower 66 millimeter CNC ported intake manifold with a Harley Davidson 64 millimeter throttle body. We are running the stock air cleaner setup on the bike and it is tuned by us. And look at that. Before the bike when it was stock, peak torque was 107 foot pounds of torque. We are now making roughly 120 as soon as we get on the throttle. And it's peaking at 3,800 RPMs on torque. Most of the time you're riding is mm -hmm. between 2,500 and 35, yeah. that's where that bike just starts to take off and rip. So you're gonna feel a huge um, amount of acceleration anytime you get on that bike. Yeah. So it's just a really nice curve. And then the bike made stock, look at that, impressive 86 horsepower. Now, 126 horsepower, and it, it just makes life a lot easier. Are you ready for this, this is the bad news? Yeah, <laughs> there's bad news? You can never have a stock one. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I already know that, yeah. You know, and I used to go for like, air cleaner when you mentioned that like I always go for like I wanted like a design I wanted a look but it didn't give me the best performance so I love that you're like no rock this it's the best performance well, you're like hey these things are fast enough for me anyway I don't really need more power and I'm like well wait till you have some our customers know <laughs> they know they're like you need more part of this is too is like I'm, I am a serious rider and to be taken seriously you want to obviously ride something that is a you know, not just for appearance or not just for show. I mean, I. Well, plus when you pull up, you want it to sound awesome. Yeah, I. You can't, you can't pull up on stock Harley and be like, oh, look at yeah. that badass bike. It's just like yours there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you pull up, blah, 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 blah. I'm so excited. Are you kidding me? Like, when I rode to Iowa and back, I wanted my body hurt. And it's not because like stock wasn't awesome. Stock is stock and it's not for everybody. And like the way I ride, it just wasn't. So like this was, I was like, I gotta get my shoulders up. And this is like perfect position. Long way from that Sportster with those RSD moto bars. <laughs> I was like riding like this. I rode that Sportster four times across America, east, west, west, north, south, and I got like two iron butts on it. 
like literally iron butts, but also like the kind that's online, like with a certificate iron butt. Yeah, a thousand in a day and a 1500 in a 24 hours, which is crazy. My goal was like, get somewhere. One day I was like, no one was answering me about Sturgis, what we were doing in Sturgis. So I rode to California from Kentucky, 2,700 miles in two days and showed up. And I was like, what are we doing? Like, wh who's written the house? What's the plan? Who's hiring me? <laughs> you know, I was like, you know, and I showed up, same uh, Harley. That's how I started working with Harley. I was at Sturgis and we've been working through contracts and stuff. And so I just rode 900 miles straight to Harley, showed up at corporate and right at the front. And they're like, we've never had anybody do that. So they just hired me then. I called it sports for yoga. Cause it's like, you just, you put, that's why I have back pegs and then had high weight pegs. So you get tired. So you just like, where, whatever way you gotta rest. I always have bags here. I mean, cars are going by, if she's passing cars, they're just staring at her. Like, what is she doing? So the dyno was like a big learning curve for me. So it's time to step up my game. I go to you, of course, and I, uh, you get, we got the dyno. I broke it in on the 800 mile trip home. And um, immediately, I mean, it was the next day, I'd already had parts delivered, stripped it down, put new pipes on. I don't even remember, bags, tea bags, all this stuff. And um, rode it to Sturges like two days later. And uh, that's when I learned like, first of all, I don't know everything that I'm doing and I didn't use, get the best things. I should have consulted with you on a lot of those things. And then, you know, it was another long distance trip. And then I just, I rode that bike, like I gave that bike hell. And I'm sorry because you took it in on trade and you're learning everything I did to it before I gave it to you. All these things in my life, like all the bikes that I've ridden, you know, from the ones I've gotten from you or that I've been fortunate enough in my career to ride, like from all the other companies, Triumph and Ducati and all of that, I really know what I want to ride and how I want to ride. Like, I've got a good idea of that. And then I come to you and you tell me, this is what you need to make that happen. Right. And like, that's what I need. Like that's, and to have that trust is really cool because there's not a lot of people, now we've known each other for how many years, like that I can say, you know how I ride, yeah. So another reason when you contacted me and you wanted to do this bike, I was excited because the road glide's great and you mm -hmm. tour a lot, but now we can get a bike for someone that's smaller or doesn't want to go to the big step of the Grand American Touring, but still get you a touring bike with wind protection, a full fairing on here. And this is a fixed fairing, which is really important. Bags to hold everything you need. And you have basically a mini road glide. Yeah. Without going to the big boy bike. I knew like certain things that I wanted, but you made it better because you knew exactly all the things that would like go with what I was talking about, well, you know? You knew you needed this. And I was oh, yeah. letting you leave with a stock motor again. You did it. <laughs> You're so good at selling that to me. But you know what? It wasn't hard. You know, it was like two quest to ask and I was like, you, you okay. Been wanting it. Yeah, I've been wanting it so I mean, bad. I didn't realize how much you wanted it until you ride it though. <laughs> I love it. You know why? Because I don't like to hesitate and I need the power that pulls me through like the decisions I make. And some of those are fast. horsepower sucks. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Not at all. Are you kidding me? Well, for your first built bike, how do you feel? What did you like? Uh, wow. I mean, everything, to be honest. It was, first of all, I'm really upset that I never did this before. And uh, because it was just a way better ride. It had everything I needed. The power I wanted, but it was just a smooth ride the velocity the torque the horsepower everything just was in sync i've never had anything do that before the setup where the bars were was great comfortable like i, 
I felt good going into a turn because I had better control over my bike because the way I was sitting on my bike. More confidence. Yeah, way more, for sure. I love it. I love the sound of it. I love the look of it. We, we stopped earlier. And she's at light. She's like, I had my head jerk back a couple times. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, when you first, when I first started, I'm not used to it. I've never had a bike do that before. It threw me back. Well, when you have torque, you know, this has the MHP, the Moonshine Horsepower 45 cam. It's a stock 117. We explained all that in the beginning of the video. They're real torquey right off the hit. And you don't have to wait for it to come in. So your, your first day riding, you're going to learn your throttle over. Once you learn that though, you're good to go. And it's got all the power you need and you don't have to downshift as much. Oh, I know, that was the other thing. I love that too. Getting, so it was, in, at first it was, yeah, getting used to the throttle, getting used to the shifting, cause it was totally different. It was like having a totally different bike. It was like having a brand new, different motorcycle than what I got, so I love it. Passed me a couple times, had to pass me. <laughs> I had to try and keep up with you. <laughs> I was like, just go, have fun. <laughs> um, no, but this, if you're looking for a lowrider S, you know, you can either start with a cam set up in the engine first, you can start with the bar set up first or the suspension, but typically we do bars first, and then after we get you comfortable, feeling good on the bike, we go into a little more power and then roll into suspension. So this is kind of your lowrider ST essential kit. We wanted to give it to Letitia so she can ride it. This is her bike. She purchased this from us, wanted this stuff done. We just wanted to give you feedback from a female rider that's known in the industry and it's her first bike with horsepower. So I know. Excited to get it done for you. I'm excited too. And I gotta be honest, even though like you talk about all the power that you get from it and at first when I got on it, I was like, don't want to make an idiot of myself. This is, a, this is a lot more bike than I'm used to. So I was intimidated and nervous, but I'm telling you, it was way easier riding this bike than what it was stock. It was way better. It was like butter, just amazing. Well, when they make torque down low, you just let the clutch out and it goes. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the bike stalling or anything because it's got enough power, it just pulls right through the- It almost felt like it drove it, rode itself, you know? Yeah. It did at times. I was like, wow, this is like, very comfortable, I don't have to think. It's like and then when you want to get the in trouble, Tesla of motorcycles. You can. And then when you want to get in trouble, you can. I can, you I can. totally can. <laughs> I know, I love it, hey, thank no, you. No one illegally passed any cars today? That's important to know, no one? We just got off the trace, it was a gorgeous ride, it's a beautiful day, I got this great bike and it's just like, it just felt right. Now the pipe's all broken. I know, that's what, I was looking at that, I was like, how awesome is that? Now the pipe looks really good. Looks like I've actually ridden it. Did you notice not having heat shields on the exhaust? Did you notice anything not, different? Uh-uh, I didn't, but we're also not riding in super hot weather. So I don't know if that's any different, but I didn't notice anything. I mean, you would still, it's 70 out, but I mean, when it's hot, it's hot, but no. These are far enough from your leg, you don't really notice it. And then what did you think about having the mini floorboards from transitioning from the foot peg? I, I loved it because it's, it feels just way more comfortable on my foot for one, like I'm flat footed. So like that little peg just hurts the way if I sit on it. So the boards were perfect. And I also like resting my heel or like just moving around. You know me, I like to do that yoga on the bike. So I got, I use these a few times. These are up high though. Oh man, we gotta do a night ride to check these bad boys out. I know. We got no feedback today on the lights, but they're gonna be a lot better than stock. Yeah. Um, they look really good. They're tucked in. Oh, I can't wait to ride those in the park because I'm gonna need them. It'll be neat to compare them next to that JW speaker that I had before. Yep. Because it's like a lot of trust in that integrated light, but these, like no matter what, are gonna get me there. And then your phone mount worked out really well. I was right perfect. I videoed you, I snapped it off, took a little video. That's totally illegal, by the way. <laughs> snapped it back on, you know, while I'm riding. Grips are great, I've had the grips before. No, oh, the vibrate, like no vibration, like super comfortable. My arms, I have a labrum tear in this arm, so it gets tired really easy. Nothing, like my fingers will go numb in that arm too sometimes. Nothing, none of that. Yeah. If you want one of these builds, you call us. We'll get you taken care of. We got the horsepower guys, Stock Nick, known as Nick Zanola. Give us a call, we'll build you one. If you're looking for a build or would like to get in contact with us, the easiest way to do it is to go to our website. Type in moonshineharley.com. Once again, moonshineharley.com. Go to our homepage. On the homepage, there's tabs at the top of the screen. The one in the middle says performance shop. When you highlight performance shop, a drop down will pop up. Click on the moonshine horsepower button. Basically, what we need to know is how to contact you, 
You need to fill out your name, your phone number, and then the bike. The more info you put on here, the more prepared we are when we call you. Your current engine, current parts on the bike, because we want to know what we can continue to use in the build you're looking for, or if you need everything. Um, what parts are going to be friendly to the build you're looking for? And then building goals, what are you looking for? What do you want us to accomplish with your bike? Put it in there. Also put the time frame, first available, you're three, four months out. Let us know how quickly you would like us to get to your build. And then hit that submit button. Someone from our horsepower team will call you back. So it'll either be Aaron, Nick, myself, Jamie, or maybe MVO, Michael Van Orden. One of us four will call you back. Our schedule is Tuesday through Saturday. All the horsepower guys, Tuesday through Saturday. The shop is open seven days a week. And typically when you fill one of these out, it can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 48 hours to get back in contact with you. But we will. We appreciate the support. Please, if you haven't already, go to the subscribe button. Click that guy. Also, you might want to click on the bell for notifications. Let's you know when we have a live event coming up on YouTube. Also, lets you know when we're about to drop a brand new video. We appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for all the support. Have a good one.